Step into the incense and whiskey sanctuary with mindfulness enthusiasts and verified whiskey lovers, Mecca and Ashley, as they discuss all the random topics they love, from mindfulness to memes. This is Ashley. And this is Mecca. Okay, Mecca, we've been talking about exercising, taking care of your body. I need you to make it make sense. Why would anybody want to do aerial yoga? Please tell me. Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so let me just preface it with I am not a yogi, and um, yoga is not my preferred. meditation or movement and it is considered like a meditation it's a body meditation Mm -hmm. um but i have taken aerial yoga a couple times because i like to try things out so you did this more than once (laughs) yeah i have tried it more than one time (laughs) please tell us tell the people and I'm, i'm laughing because because i'm not necessarily like a yoga person though i have started liking yin yoga like i love yin yoga can you break it down for me? What is yin yoga? Yin yoga is more about uh, mobility. Um, it's all about stretching and making your body a little bit more mobile. It's it's um, a sense a, a, a type of yoga that that involves stretching um, your hips, your arms. It's kind of like that end of, in my opinion, that end of the week kind of uh, stretch. But in yoga, okay. and I like it because I don't have to like, you know. I get so frustrated trying to figure out the poses that I missed the point. And yes, and that's why I don't like yoga. Yeah, and, but, but you know, it's also been explained to me that yoga is a form of meditation for your body. So if you look at it like that and don't worry about the poses and don't worry about how you look, then you probably will have a better experience. But right. uh, moving along to aerial yoga, in my opinion, it's almost like how, um, you know, you have a hamburger, right? And then you have someone that makes a double hamburger and then you have somebody that makes, let's put donuts in, in place of buns. It's almost like, let's just keep going um, and making it a, a tier one, tier two, tier three. So instead of just doing yoga on the ground, now we can be suspended in the air doing yoga. Okay. Um, it's almost like, let's, let's just take it up a notch. Right. So, the next level and the next level and the next level. And the next level. Right. And so the level of, so with aerial yoga, I mean, of course the, some of the benefits hands down is upper body strength and abs because you're okay. you're using that right so the way it looks is the it's these like a uh, silk kind of fabric that's harnessed from the ceiling mm-hmm. and uh, so they kind of look like a, a bit of a cocoon so the instructor typically shows you how to get into it and there's these uh, it's vinyasa yoga style that's that's the yoga that you're doing but so it can kind of be used like as a cardio piece um, and also just like, you know, upper body strength as well. And it's supposed to help improve your lung capacity, your range of motion. Um, and it's just a way to safely like stretch your muscles. So the instructor is still giving you these yoga moves while you're in this aerial kind of suspended. And you're not like, you are not you're probably like what three feet off the ground or something like that not that you're not like all the way in the air I mean there there are some that are you know that are up there but I think in my opinion I feel like aerial yoga uh aerial yoga is like one of those like not like kind of like a like a what's the word for this almost like oh yeah I've done that it's something to say you've done I don't know if the benefits outweigh just going to a regular yoga vinyasa class Okay. Um, but it it, it, it adds another layer to yoga. And, and and I know that there's a lot of people out there that love yoga and they swear by it. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't. This is just a, a type of yoga that can kind of get you out of the normal mat, you know, frustrated about you not making the pose or the pose is too long. <laughs> or girl, when are we going to be done with this? <laughs> so aerial yoga, you can kind of hide out in there too. So. There's that benefit. Say, yes, I will say I tried it. I was probably 21 when I first tried it. Oh, so you have tried it. 
I have tried it, but I don't understand why people continue to do it. Because <laughs> I think I did one session and I was like, okay. And then I tried, okay, let me be fair. I did try it again, maybe 10 years later. And oh, you gave it another chance. I didn't enjoy I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I upside down? The blood is rushing to my head. Right. <laughs> and that was it. So today, that's why I come to you humbly to ask. I'm not endorsing it one way or the other. I'm just kind of giving you what's out there. Yeah. The, and, and, and I would not say this is a yoga me. that you can, this is not a, unless you already have a harness, unless you already have something installed in your home, this is not some type of home workout. This is definitely <laughs> a go to the studio <laughs> workout. <laughs> or they may have some at home like contraptions or something, but just, I want to say that. So nobody can say Mecca told you to try this at home. Don't try this at home. Go to a studio for the aerial yoga. Um, exactly. You your yoga to the next level. It's yoga to the next level. I mean, but one yoga that I have tried that I actually like. Yes. So wait, let me just say this. I like heated yoga. I probably like heated yoga because I feel like my body can move a little bit easier because I of the heat. Mm-hmm. Um, but so just say that but the other yoga that i've tried that was a little new was called trap yoga do you know what that is i'm i feel like i i've never done a trap yoga class but i feel like i i get it conceptually but walk me through what is a trap yoga class so trap yoga is also like a vinyasa style yoga flow um but it's paired with like you know trap music and trap music if for anyone that doesn't know that what it is it's like a combination of like hip-hop infused with like a lot of heavy bass um and beats so that's kind of like a trap yoga and they've they've you know some of the instructors have specific music to go with their routine so it's not random songs okay Um, and this is for you know someone that likes to have a little bit maybe a little bit more upbeat music a little bit more a little bit more soul and the music selection and the yoga poses kind of like complement that music so it's a it's an alternative for uh the women that need a little bit more mm. i hear you how many times have you tried trap yoga i've tried trap. i have i had I, I bought a pack so i bought a pack of i think it was like five or seven or something like that so That's i've tried a- it for i tried it quite a, i've tried that more times than i've tried area area yoga okay. or any other type of yoga Okay, I'm wondering how I can make your Pilates session when I teach you a trap Pilates session. Ooh, <laughs> now if you do that, you can call trap Pilates. Trap okay. Pilates. I've done hot Pilates before. I loved it. I want some more of it, but that means I would just like get a little space heater in my house. <laughs> <laughs> now you can do trap yoga at home. You can easily you can easily go on some YouTube videos, um, YouTube. Or even just kind of create your own flow. Maybe you have five styles of five positions you really love, or maybe it's one position you really love. Turn on that music that you really love, and there you have you have had your own DIY trap yoga class. So yeah. that is something that you can do at home. I support that. Yeah, right. That's fun. Have you ever heard of having? You know, what's the feeling that you get when you dance? I'm not a big dancer. <laughs> I'm not a well, big dancer. Well, but I will say, um, it when I do dance, um, I feel like a certain sense of freedom, mm-hmm. I would say, and maybe like um a connection with my body and the space around me. Okay. It's okay. So you have an idea what it feels like to dance. And I think those are all really great descriptions. So like you know, there's this organization that came out that decided that, you know, why don't we kind of help people create the best day of their life, but we start early in the morning. We start at the break of dawn. So okay. the one thing that they, they what they, uh, what they uh, promote is creating these dance parties in the morning, 5, 6 a.m. in the morning, and no drinking. So it's a sober dance party in the morning that basically gets you motivated, allows for self-expression, all inclusive, uh, without any substances before going to work. So <laughs> now some people might look at that like, no uh, substance 
sentences. That's no, the okay. I just gotta put that up there. There's, this is not a, a dance party with alcohol and drugs or anything. Because when you hear dance party, you know, you kind of, but this is a way to kind of like get you moving and like start your day off right. And so what I thought was pretty cool is they, they have them all over the city and now they have them all over the world, like in other like countries. So I think that's pretty cool. And the idea is to like, you know, ha have that, that self-connection in the morning, the same way we feel good when we're hanging out with our friends and we're dancing. Why not bring that same attitude to the morning? Now, mind you, because of COVID, you know, they have started doing a lot of online and, you know, I don't know if it's Zoom, but they've used some platform where you can be at home and everybody just kind of dancing at home. But you can even, this is a DIY that you can do at your house, right? You know, the yeah. same the same feeling that you go to, like, I always like to use spinning because there's this, this spin class that I would love. It would be dark. It felt like a nightclub. The music would be pumping. And it was all sober. It was all great music. But I felt like I had just been out, but it was still early in the morning. I had to go to work. And I love that feeling. So I think that this is a, a this is something that you can either do with an organization or you can do it on your own, right? Call up your girlfriends, y'all do a Zoom call at six o'clock in the morning and <laughs> dance it out. You could just dance it out before your first Zoom work call or whatever it is that you do for work. <laughs> and you can have this little dance party. And I think it's fun. Have a dance party with you and your friends and your family or whatever, just to start the day. Hey, we saw each other and we all danced together. So um, those are some things that you can do. I'm with it. At home or with someone else. Get your dance on. Get your Move dance your on. <laughs> Ashley, is this something that you think you would uh, partake in? I'm going to try it tomorrow and report back. <laughs> I think that that's a good idea. I'm going to do a solo first. You all going to say who's going to be your partner, but if you want to do a solo, that's fine. I might try to pull my husband in on it. Not unclear, unclear. It's, the music. It, it's an equivalent to doing a workout in the morning, right? We have our music in our ears. We're doing something. We're moving our bodies. So just dance it out. That's all I say. Yeah. All right. All right. And there's that. These all will be listed on our Instagram, just so in case you were trying to write this down. We'll have a little list of ideas that you can do right at home. Some you cannot do at home, but you'll have the list um, on our Instagram. Thanks for listening. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. Hi. Hey. hey. So today on Incense and Whiskey Podcast, we have um, um, Aida Johnson Rap. Yes. That would be and right. that's, I said that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about um, we are talking about women of color in the fitness and wellness industry and that space. And I'm going to introduce you guys to um, Aida. Aida has been in the fitness and wellness industry for over 20 years. Um, she served in the army. She's been a professional dancer, professional cheerleader, all around superwoman. She has an e an extensive event production background. That's actually how me and Aida met each other at the Mayor's Office of Special Events um, here in Chicago. Um, and like even today, where we, even as today, so that was 20 years ago of her starting in this industry and bringing it up to where we are now. She is currently like a, a, a director of group fitness at a, a major fitness center here in Chicago. And uh, leading up to where she is right now, she has started a company called Aspire to Harmony, and they are devoted to creating rituals for cycle of life celebrations. We welcome you, Aida. Yay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I like how you made me really young when you said I have 20 years experience. I think we could say times <laughs> two, but that's all right. <laughs> I always like to say over 20 because you know 20 is like that's that really nice round number so when you say over 20 you're like oh she knows what she doing she knows what she doing anyway but definitely yes. <laughs> I'm here for all the pearls of wisdom tonight I I can't wait to hear it yeah we are excited so the, the conversation kind of started um it kind of it, it's kind of piggybacking on some things that we've talked about before with just kind of being in the wellness space and feeling comfortable in your body um, with different types of exercises with, um, as a participant, um, depending on, you know, it could be a Pilates, it could be a yoga class, just being in a space 
where one feels comfortable as a participant. But I think it would also be cool to talk to you because you are a practitioner in this industry. And so I'm sure you've seen uh, when you first started out um, in your early years to where it is now, like the progression, of, or if there has been any progression with women of color in this space. And we would love to kind of hear what your experience has been. Um, yeah, that, that's, kind of, that's, that's kind of like the, the meat of it. We just kind of want to dive into what that looks like for, for so you. So which part of that do you want me to start with? Do you want me to start right, I know, I just about the early I, days? Or? I think you should start with like some of the early, I, you know, even kind of comparing it back and forth on, you know, entering into that space when you first started and comparing to when it is now, I would assume you were probably always the only of everything. Um, yes. That and I don't know if it's correct. like that now, but that's kind of, that's where we can start. Yeah, that would be great. So yes, um, in the fitness industry, even before it was an industry, there would be like a bodybuilding gym or a, a little dance studio or some woman would have like a little exercise studio where you did calisthenics. And I usually was the only person that I saw uh, in that space, but um, it kind of happened because in the early days, and we're talking prior to like late 70s, there were no training programs, there were no certifications. Really, basically, you had to be very energetic, you had to be able to lead people and get people excited about moving, and basically, you had to look good in a leotard. And um, <laughs> that was the was, criteria. That was the criteria. I mean, the people who had any type of movement training were probably people who had physical education degrees. And they were mostly educators. So they were about the business of, you know, teaching kids golf skills and bowling skills and callous, basic calisthenics. So right. the arena that I entered into was a whole a whole different thing. Uh, it was just about getting people excited. So music was really important. Um, your energy, your vocal energy, your movement, all of that was important. And basically there just weren't a lot of people in the arena period of any color. So, you know, it was not a hard entry. Okay. For sure. You could, you had all the great criteria that you just named off. And you were to just run with that. I'm curious to know, you're mentioning of the criteria of having great energy or that the music was important. Do you find that to still be true today as it was then at that time, in your opinion? Oh, even more so now. Right. Now, yes, the, the expectations have definitely grown. So the expectations are you are knowledgeable. So you have multiple certifications, personal training certifications, degrees, actually. Now you can get a degree in exercise science, in exercise physiology, in sports movement. There's mm -hmm. kinesiology. So there's a huge range of degrees that translate to the fitness industry. And then there's also intensive personal training certifications, uh, NASM, um, American Council of Sports Medicine. Those uh, certifications tend to be a little bit more intensive in terms of what you need to know, American Council on Exercise. And then there's also a group exercise specific certifications too. And a lot of those group exercise programs tend to actually focus on your ability to um, perform and deliver a message and communicate a message that keeps people motivated in a group environment. So performance skills and music. Oh my gosh. Music has really exploded. When I started, I walked around probably with about eight to 10, 33 LPs that I played on a record player. LPs. <laughs> you know, some people, some people probably say, what, what is what that? that? So, it's a record. Tell the people. It's tell record. the people. It's just a record, a vinyl record. Okay. People know what that is. <laughs> there were forty fives and there were thirty three LPs, and actually, it, prior to that, there were seventy eights. But we were using thirty three LPs, long playing 
vinyl records. Long That's what play. it stood for. Yeah, I and it's important. And so now, though, there are people who specialize in creating music for fitness classes. Mm -hmm. In fact, the um, club that I've been at, we actually hired a person that we call a music coordinator, and he curates music for instructors, instructors, because there's so many ways to get music now, and there's so many different platforms and formats that it got a little crazy that people were putting together playlists in not a great way, or they would change their mind in the middle of a, a, a playlist. So mm -hmm. we realized we needed someone to help manage wow. that because places like SoulCycle, places like uh, Equinox, places like Flywheel, they spend a lot of energy on curating music that fits their demographic, um, that creates excitement. And they also spend a lot of energy on finding what they call rock star instructors. Mm. So it's moved beyond. So you, a personal trainer can have a personal trainer um, personality, but instructors have to almost be like performers. In fact, some of these places will hire a performer and train them to teach a class. I was just getting ready to say that. Can you just be a performer and then got in, and be taught how to lead a group exercise? Absolutely. That makes that so much sense, but blew my mind at mm -hmm. the same time. And it leads me to ask as well, do, I know you just talked about the different certification organizations. Do you, in your opinion and your experience, to what extent is representation a factor in the fitness community or in the industry uh, based on, you know, your experience? Well, I would say, and it's changing, obviously, now because of the uh, focus on diversity. I mean, there's so many diversity programs going on right now mm -hmm. that it's absolutely changing before our eyes. However, I would say up until this time, the diversity in fitness really was non-existent. Mm -hmm. And it also, when you don't see yourself being marketed, Two, in terms of being a consumer, it also doesn't attract people into the industry because they feel like, where do I have a place? Mm -hmm. So there's a small representation of diverse uh, groups in the fitness industry, um, but it's better. I mean, it's way better. I mean, for years and years and years, I didn't know a whole lot of other people of color who did fitness. I knew a few, but it was a few. Yeah. But it's it's a lot better now, for sure. But it still could be more. Specifically, I'll tell you why it's really important that we see more faces actually delivering fitness as a offering to people. It's because of the health indications that we see with COVID and mm -hmm. how people are saying that exercise can help you build your immune system. Mm -hmm. So... It, it needs to change for sure. Absolutely. I was just reading an article today. Um, I think that there was a study done in the UK that indicated that and it, it, it made so much sense when I was reading it, but the study really backed it up that increased levels of exercise and engagement in even group fitness helps with or correlates with lower levels of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's one of those things where, well, yeah, that makes sense. But in the midst of COVID-19, the pandemic right now, you make a great point. Um, we, we're, we're seeing the importance of, you know, physical exercise and, and the impact that it can make on individuals, families, and communities. So that's a really great point. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's a shame that marketing efforts in the past really did not promote diversity. I mean, when you think about fitness, if you Google, just put fitness in the, a Google search. Typically, it's bodybuilding guys, thin white females, um, or very muscular white females, and then a, a splattering mm -hmm. of probably African Americans, um, people of color. I mean, rarely do you see perhaps like a, a woman of Asian descent in a fitness ad, you know? Right. So um, and then you don't have to be super thin to be fit. 
um, Serena Williams, you know, but you don't see that mm -hmm. body type very often in, in uh, marketing or even in the clubs. So. Right. Mm -hmm. What would you say is one of your first memories of seeing someone that looked like an, an, an average, when I say average woman, I mean a woman that's not, you know, a stick skinny, that had curves, that was in the fitness industry. Like what was one of your first memories of actually seeing that and being like, oh, wow. Oh, well, that's a good question. I mean, I, I mean, I'm curvy. I mean, <laughs> so I was her thinking, first time I, seeing it was herself, y'all. I looked in the mirror. <laughs> I mean, so when I'm I say I'm curvy, it, it's it's I'm a larger woman. I mean, I'm not. And see, you're I'm not though. Woman. So I think that that's yeah. crazy. That that's becoming like, oh, you're a larger woman, but you're not. Well, in the in those the days, I yeah. was. Okay. I mean, not now. Right now, uh, people would say I'm very athletic. But in the early days, when the um, weight standard was 105, 110, or, you know, a size. So going back to the 70s, a size zero would have been like a size four. So Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Would you say there's any specific area within, like, the fitness area that specifically, like, you may have seen more diversity come in play. And when I say, uh, I'm specifically talking about like, maybe you saw it happen in more group aerobics. Maybe you saw it happen in like a cycling class or a strength training. Is there any part of the industry that's, that really um, invites diversity? You know, I would say personal training. Okay. Personal training, I have definitely always seen more diversity in personal training, even as early as the early 80s, I was there and there was another Black Me Pro athletes and they were all selected to be personal trainers. Okay. I wonder to what extent the entrepreneurial aspect of personal training maybe was a driver for that I think that's as 100 well. percent the, I think that's a hundred percent piece because personal training is, is one of those, in my opinion, one of those um, careers you go into where you can kind of like make up your own rules. You can work for yourself. Someone's buying into you, right? Mm -hmm. Someone's buying yeah. into you as an individual and not into a, like a, a program or a system. And then it was also a way for people to feel like they were owning their own business as well. So I think it's yeah. a good point, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, personal training is definitely an area where for as long as I can remember, it was kind of inclusive. Okay. Okay. And so that's the fitness part. And I know we, we interchange the word fitness and wellness, but it mm -hmm. kind of is two different things. I mean, yes, fitness and wellness goes hand in hand, but someone that is a wellness practitioner, meaning like a meditation teacher may not be a group exercise teacher. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm just kind of giving that difference of uh, fitness and wellness. Correct. And so you've, you've been in, been and is in both, and you are currently in both worlds what um what would you say in regards to like seeing diversity even in the wellness space uh in the wellness space i do see diversity in areas of spa services mm -hmm. more than anything so i've seen tons and tons of massage therapists thai body works um massage therapists those folks um tend there tends to be more diversity there Mm -hmm. uh, yoga, not so much. Uh, yoga has been one of those things that I've, and, and I went to, you know, a, a gym that, a yoga program that is a chain, a huge chain. And there would be many times, I mean, they had tons of classes, they had 14 locations in Chicago, tons of classes. And there would rarely be anybody as a participant in the classes. And then I went through the yoga teacher training and I was the only one. The One of the teacher leads was a black woman, but other than that, there, yeah. weren't, there weren't any other. And there was a huge cohort between all the different studios of yoga teacher training trainees. And I was still, there were 80 people in that cohort and there was, I was the only one. Hmm. Yeah, I would say even today, I mean, you know, I think because how I situate how I want my, my social media feed to come in or any type of media to come in, I'll probably see more of it. But I also like select concentrated um, 
um, people, women of color and practitioner in that wellness practitioner life. So now you start seeing all these like wellness groups and platforms that have kind of created platforms for other practitioners to join on so people can have more resources. Yes. You know, there's a few out there now mm -hmm. um, to help, help, help you if you're looking for that. Well, I have seen, like I did actually when I was in, I went back to school and I did a paper on diversity in the fitness industry. And we did actually research a lot of programs, organizations that are starting to cater to people of color. And so it's growing mm -hmm. and that's great. And I'm happy for it. And I want to see more of us in that field. And I think what can happen then is that we don't stay so segregated in a bubble, but that, because they're, you know, people of color live all over the United States. Right. And so if you're not in an urban environment, where are you going, how are you going to integrate yourself into a fitness program that you can enjoy and feel comfortable? Right. So that's why it's important that I think we see ourselves doing this anywhere, wherever we are, as opposed to, oh, no, I'm not with that group in my city. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm out of it, you know, so... Right. No, I think that's important. I think it's really important. I mean, we and Ashley was talking about this previously, even seeing like your own body type in a certain class and feeling good about that, regardless of what color the teacher is, but just even feeling comfortable with your body type being in a class that does not match your body type. Yes. Mm -hmm. How important that is. Um, and I just yeah. think there's a lot of uh, necessary movement towards making people feel confident mm -hmm. about that fitness is for everyone, that it's a vital part of life and fitness and wellness. To me, I use them interchangeably because wellness is movement. Wellness is a, a clear mind, a sense of optimism, positivity, and you will have a better outcome in a fitness program if you incorporate all of those things. Right. Absolutely. Right. I've been thinking a lot about, especially in the time that we're in right now, um, something that my husband said to me once, <clears throat> I, I have personal issues with the words, I deserve anything. Like I deserve fill in the blank. Um, and I <laughs> it's a problem. we don't have no time for that today. And this segment, okay. that's a whole nother but, segment. We're going to get it. <laughs> we can talk about that. I but, would, um, I had a, I had a massage therapist that I would come into a session with her and you know, she'd ask, what are we focusing on? And, and she would always say, you deserve it. And I would literally respond, like, girl, I don't know about this deserve concept, but I need this shoulder massage right now. Um, <laughs> But my husband said something to me that it has really stuck with me. Um, he said, you of all people, Ashley, you internalize, you avoid conflict, you do so much for other people to make their lives easier or better when engaging with you, that why would you not deserve, you know, an opportunity to take care of yourself and focus on yourself? And I just, I've been thinking about that a lot for Black women right now um, and women of color. Uh, in this day and age that we're in and, and how many organizations in the country looking to Black women um, as the backbone of democracy and, 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 leading, the, and leading organizations. Um, so I, I just want to put it out there that I think it's important that we find ways to take care of our, our fitness, our wellness. Um, and, you know, do you have any words of advice for women who are maybe hesitant to go into certain spaces mm -hmm. yeah. or, you know, don't try, I don't know, Reiki or craniosacral therapy or whatever, because they feel like they don't have a practitioner that looks like them or they go in, they're going into spaces where women, other people in the room don't look like them. Do you have any words of advice? I just feel like it's so important for us to, you know, put that kind of thought out there. Well, I think <clears throat> what, what you all are doing, Ashley and Mecca, is demystifying it for people and creating a sense that this is important, that it, it is something that is going to bring more treasure, more uh, productivity, more value to your own personal well-being that you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. I have a 95-year-old mother. Oh, yeah. And 
That's amazing. Yeah, you've met. Yeah, yeah yes. Michael, you've met her. Yes. And she, nobody believes she's ninety-five, and she is the person who got me started in movement. I mean, she, she's not sophisticated at all. You know, she has had led a very simple life, but she liked to move and and not dance. She hates to dance, but she <laughs> liked to exercise. She liked to walk. She loved the feeling that she got from moving her body. And, I love it. and it, it created a long life and it created a way for her to better serve her family. Mm-hmm. It created a way... I mean, even right now today, she's on one medication. Wow. One medication. And wow. she can clean her own house. She can cook her own food. And it's it's a combination of things. So it wasn't just moving. She all had, also has been a very spiritual person her whole life. She also has always been very optimistic. Uh, mm. She likes to uh, find things that enhance her to you know she reads things that enhances her knowledge i mean she can't use a computer but you know, she <laughs> right she, she knows what's not. going doing on all right, right. <laughs> and so that's what i mean by wellness yeah and and to think of it more as a way to be a better human being as opposed to i want to look good in this dress um you know i want my butt to look good in these pants to think of it more in a holistic way that you're going to be better able to serve your family, serve your community. You're going to be healthier longer, at least, you know, as long as nothing catastrophic happens. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is all about. It's, it's a whole continuum. And I think that we as a people can actually change how people view wellness and fitness for the entire country because yes we have some specific issues we were disproportionately affected by covid and Mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with these um core more morbidities that can be changed like hypertension diabetes obesity but we could be a model for the whole country as to how to engage in a better lifestyle right absolutely that's a word a whole word. <laughs> What's that? It's that a whole word. word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you young people. <laughs> I love it. I love it because you're right. My body, so and positive thinking, improving your life, movement, just thinking about thinking about it from a holistic point. I love that. And and just kind of moving along to like where you are now and all of these accomplishments and all these experiences that you've had you are now, you know, you're working on your own business and your own project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So I, um, you know, uh, the quarantine certainly motivated us to do a lot of things, but Craig and I, when we got married, we had put together this little PowerPoint for ourselves that we were going to create these workshops that included Um, some leadership training, some communication training, some meditation, some movement. And so that's been a concept and an idea for a while. Mm -hmm. And then when I went back to school, I was in a business and entrepreneurship program. I've also been working with an entrepreneurship program for veterans that I've been a volunteer for. And so I've got this entrepreneurial bug that's been planted for about... uh, three to five years now. Yeah. And so in the quarantine, I started getting a little bit busier because health clubs closed down and everything closed down, obviously. And then we were slow to reopen. Yeah. And so I said, Ooh, time for me to get this thing going, this Mm -hmm. LLC. And I actually created an LLC for this idea that came to me. I was watching a program and aspiration was a word and I'm like Mm. yeah we all want to achieve something as aspire and then harmony is a word that brings all of wellness and and peace of mind and and just comfort together and health is one of those things that 
creates that for you. And then happiness. And so I got married five years ago. That, as you know, you helped me out a lot with that. I that. did. That was fun. And that, it, was a, it was a very happy day, very fun day. And um, I met someone at an event uh, association and we talked about weddings. And she talked about how she had been uh, a wedding planner and turned into a wedding officiant. And so I said, oh, wedding officiant? <laughs> well, my goodness, that involves making people happy, communicating to people, and getting, helping people get ready. So when you're helping people create their vows, because that's something that a wedding officiant does, you talk to them about their lives. Mm -hmm. I said, I can put all of this stuff that I've been doing, yeah. meditation, fitness, communication, storytelling because I did some storytelling courses at Second City. I did the entire Second City improv program. I've been in fitness for all these decades. And so I decided to create a company called Aspire to Harmony, cool. where one part of it, and hopefully that'll be the most revenue I can generate, but one part will be helping um, couples create their vows and actually delivering their vows. And then the other side of it is doing um, meditation with people, creating workshops to help people use some of the tools of improv and storytelling mm -hmm. to communicate better. And, you know, I can offer that in groups or off offer that privately. And then, of course, I'm always ready to teach a class. So yeah. I'm still teaching classes right yeah. now. And so, you know, I want to be able to offer those services. And you know, hopefully it takes off. I'm it, confident that it will. It will. And I'm ready to go full on launch in December. I've got like my website started and it's yeah. still in progress and I've got business cards. And the next time you see this blank wall back here in my office, which I know your listeners can't see, but it's a big white blank wall. I have a decal aspire to harmony that's going to be there for okay. any time i do anything virtual yeah all so, right boom ready <laughs> so yeah so i'm just um everything that i've ever worked on i think this will be i know that this will be a product that will bring me satisfaction right and i think that's, sure. that part is bringing you satisfaction because then you can exude mm -hmm. that on your clients I love that. I think that totally fits you 100%. That sounds like a really great project for you and Craig to work on. Um, and so we can find you on Instagram. Um, is it Aspire to Harmony? Yes. Mm -hmm. Aspire number two, Harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay, on Instagram. And then also your website. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. And you can also, you know, I, I understand that, you know, you want to grab those domains that are similar. So aspire to harmony, aspire number two, harmony, all of those <laughs> get you there. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. I love it. Catch us next time on Incense and Whiskey. In the meantime, take a breath, have a sip. 